this was one of the very first places that I came to hike and explore when I uh, first moved to Spain. It's actually within the borders of El Campeo and the name is one that I can never actually remember exactly how to pronounce but I'm going to put it there now. I've decided to come back here because I know there's lots of old gnarled possibly dead or dying fruit trees up here as well as some views out over the surrounding hills and mountains and coastal areas. So I thought I'd come up and have a look and see what I can do. A bit of exploring, a bit of walking, hopefully a bit of photography. I hope you'll enjoy the video. If you do and you're new here, don't forget to hit subscribe before you go. It's a lovely afternoon, warm, halfway through March now, nearly, and uh, just a nice day to come out for a walk and hopefully get some photography in. The, the main trail here, I think is something like six and a half kilometers, seven kilometers as a circuit. So I'm gonna walk that today, but I'm probably also going to you know, branch off into some uh, uncharted territory on the way round, see what else I can find. There's definitely some old dead trees around here, one here, there's a little stump over there, there's uh, some there. These are mostly going to be fruit trees that have you know, kind of been abandoned and died. I seem to recall there being some that look like they've been struck by lightning as well. If you get the right light on some of these features they could make quite nice detail shots. Just going off of the official trail for a few minutes. Just to see if there's something down this little side path. Sometimes these little side paths have some interesting stuff that uh, you miss if you stick to the main trail all the time. I just spotted this little bit of, I don't know, shrub, twig, whatever it is, growing out of the muddy soil down here. Well, I say muddy, it's dry mud. Um, it's got some quite nice shapes. It's got a few little tiny green bits on it. And I just, I don't know, there's just something about it that appealed to me. It'd be nicer if there was some light on it, but I don't think that's gonna happen. Um, but I thought I'd set up anyway. So I'm pointing the camera literally straight down onto it and I'll show you the composition. I'm focused obviously on the, the twigs and it's a flat scene pretty much. So, And uh, we'll just have to see what it looks like.
found this cool, dead, gnarly tree. If I can get down lower, there might be an image here. So let's have a quick look around, see if we can find a way to get down underneath it and shoot up. That might work. Yeah, okay, I think we've got a shot here, so let's uh, see about getting set up and shooting it. Okay, vertical orientation. I've got the tree filling most of the frame, a bit of the wall down in the foreground. This is probably gonna end up being a five by seven crop, just to take out a little bit of the extra wall. I want to be looking up at the tree. I want it kind of looming over me. And what I've done is I've made sure that I've got the spread of the branches looking good. So it, it's, there's not too much crossover in any of the branches. I just wonder if I should move a little bit further to the left, actually. Let's have a look at that. Yeah, I think that's a little bit better. Just moved a little bit to the left, just increasing the separation as much as I can. I still sometimes find it easier to use the viewfinder. Uh, let's have a look on the back of the camera. Okay, so that's the scene I've got, and I'm going to crop out some of the bottom of this, maybe a little bit of the top with a 5 by 7 crop, I would think. And this is going to be a high contrast, black and white, focused on the tree. I've already done that. I need to bring that exposure down because that's going to blow the highlights. This might have to be a merged exposure because still blowing highlights, still blowing highlights, still blowing highlights. So like one five hundredth of a second keeps my highlight detail. So let's shoot that. And then what we'll do is we'll go probably something like, let's do a one two fiftieth. And then we'll go One one twenty fifth. And then we'll go all the way to a fiftieth to give me as much shadow detail as I might want. And then what I'm going to do is merge those later, probably in Photoshop, maybe using luminosity masks, in fact, almost certainly using luminosity masks in Photoshop to keep highlight details and shadow details. That might look interesting. Sort of moody and sinister and a little bit threatening maybe. This is one of those shots that's worth a go. I'm not sure if it's really going to work all that well, but it's worth trying. I've got this, yeah, I've got this big sort of chunk of dead tree, and it's got some wonderful patterns and textures in there. I'm getting low down to really feature that in the foreground, and also to bring the end of it up closer to uh, where we've got the newer trees over there. And then we've got quite a nice sky, nice cloud patterns. It's going to be another bracketed exposure, I'm pretty sure. Let's have a quick look at it. Okay, 
So at the moment I'm focused on the foreground. I've got the focus peaking turned on, but I've manually focused on the foreground and you can see that's in focus. So let's get my exposure information up. Okay, and that's obviously gonna blow out completely. So let's come all the way back. Now I only really need to worry about the sky being uh, blown out. So I'm gonna shoot this at, or yeah, okay, let's go for a 15th of a second. And I think that will give me a nice clean foreground. Let's just check that. Yeah, so it's blowing the sky out, but the foreground's nice and clean. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to zoom in to the background. Focus on that. I can see I've still got most of the middle ground and the background in focus. So I'm going to do another shot at a 15th of a second for that. And again, still blowing the sky out. So now I'll pull that down a 15th, 30th. A 60th of a second is still going to blow some of the sky out, but it will give me some middle ground to work on. And let's try one two fiftieth of a second. And now I've got a cleanly exposed sky. for a while now trying to work out if there's anything to shoot here at sunset because it does kind of look like sunset might be reasonably nice but to be honest this location isn't really a sunset location it's not even a, it's not a sunrise location either it's more of a sort of mid to late afternoon stroke early to mid morning location Sunset's about 40 minutes away. I'm just not quite sure that there's a composition here to be had to make use of it. And I haven't really got time to get anywhere else by the time I get back to the car and move on. It'll be too late. Uh, I'll keep looking around and see if I can find anything. Okay, I found this scene and I'm gonna shoot it quickly while we've still got some light on it. So I've got these two trees here and I'm using those to frame that tree in the background. Yeah, there's a road in the background, which is not the prettiest thing in the world, but it kind of really doesn't matter. Um, I've been very careful to make sure that the whole of the background tree is visible. There are some twigs here that are kind of sticking up and uh, getting in the way a little bit. It may not matter, or I might have to take them out in post if they're encroaching too much into the tree in the background. A little bit of light falling on the foreground trees. So it's time to take the shot. Let me show you on the screen. So I've got the tripod down nice and low to the ground so that I can shoot through and make sure that that background tree is fully revealed. There's none of the branches from the, the foreground trees blocking that background tree. So we've got the two trees here, that tree in the background. I'm focusing on the foreground trees. It's like 1 20th of a second at f11. Let's take that shot. Right, uh, I don't think there's anything worth hanging around for at sunset. 
as I said, it's not really a sunset location, so if, we, if we've got the best sunset in the world, I've got nothing I can really do with it. But that's okay, I've enjoyed doing what I've been doing, which is mostly photographing dead trees, apart from these ones. But the others were all dead, so that's probably what this video is going to be called, something like photographing dead trees. Whatever I call it, I hope you've enjoyed it. If you have, please give it a like, share it on social media, leave me a comment, and uh, providing it doesn't disappear randomly, which some of them do, I'll definitely respond. And uh, if you're new here and you've enjoyed this, don't forget to hit subscribe before you go. As always, I really appreciate you taking the time to watch, so thank you very much. And until the next video, bye.